Part A and Part B for this question are quite straightforward. Part C is where it starts to get tricky. We have figure 2 shows a sketch of part of the curve with equation y is equal to x times x plus 2 times x minus 4. The region R1, shown shaded in figure 2, is bounded by the curve in the negative x-axis. So here is R1. And then we're trying to show for part A that the exact area of R1 is equal to 20 over 3. So we want to integrate that curve between these two limits. So we need to work out what those two x values are. We can do that by looking at the cubic equation that we have here. So we'd set that equal to 0. So x times x plus 2, x minus 4 is equal to 0. We end up with three solutions. We get x is 0, minus 2, and 4. So this point here would be 4. This point would be 0. And this point here would be minus 2. So then to work out what R1 is, we have to integrate what we have here between minus 2 and 0. First expand out that cubic, so expand this out. I'll expand out the second two brackets first, so they will end up being, so it's a quadratic, it'll be x squared plus 2x minus 4x, which is minus 2x, minus 8, and then expand this out again, x cubed minus 2x squared minus 8x. We're integrating this between minus 2 and 0. So raise the power by 1, divide by the new power, limits of minus 2 and 0. So this is to show that question. So we want to write down actually putting in these numbers of 0 and minus 2. So when you put in 0 into these three things, you just get 0. So we can just write that. When you put in minus 2, we want to write down each of the terms with minus 2 replacing the x. So we get those method marks. Evaluate this. 0, this whole thing here will end up being minus 20 over 3. So we end up with 20 over 3, which is what we wanted. Now for part B. Okay, so the region R2, also shown shaded in figure 2, is bounded by the curve, the positive x-axis, and the line with the equation x is equal to b, where b is a positive constant. So we can see that on our diagram. R2 is over here. It's bounded by the curve, the x-axis, the line x is equal to b. And we're told the area of R1 is equal to the area of R2, and hence we want to verify that B satisfies this equation here. Okay, so because it says verify, we can use this in our answer. We don't have to arrive at that equation, we can use it in our answer. Okay, so we know that the area of R1 is equal to 20 over 3. We worked that out in the previous question. So the area of R2 we can get by integrating the exact same curve. So x cubed minus 2x squared minus 8x. This time between limits of 0 and b. And that should be equal to 20 over 3, but because this area is beneath the x-axis, then our answer for the integral will be negative. So actually this will be equal to minus 20 over 3. They have the same area, but when you integrate beneath the x-axis, it gives you a negative value. Okay, so this here, when we evaluate that, it should end up with what we have over here. So integrate the same as before, so it's the exact same thing, x is a 4 over 4. But now our limits are 0 and b, and this will be equal to minus 20 over 3. So we're going to be simplifying this. Put in the b, b to the 4 over 4. And then when we put in 0, we end up with 0, so just take away that 0, which is obviously nothing. And that will be equal to minus 20 over 3. Okay, so there is a common denominator of 12. So if I multiply everything by 12, I get rid of the fractions. If I multiply the first fraction by 12, I'll get 3b to the 4. The next fraction will be minus 8b to the 3 
minus 4 times 12 is minus 48. And then we will have this. Actually, what I'll do now is I'll bring it to the left-hand side. So I'll bring this over. It then becomes plus. Remember, I'm timesing everything by 12. So when I times that by 12, I'd end up with positive 80. Okay, so this is, I'm going to call this equation, equation 1. So we want to show that b satisfies this equation. So this has to somehow be the same or transform into what we have here. And the easiest way to show that those two things are the same is just to expand this out. Again, this is a verify question, so we can use the result. So expand out the b plus 2 squared, etc. I'll start with the b plus 2 squared. So that would be b squared plus 4b plus 4. This, keep this the same for now. Now we're going to multiply this whole thing out. So let's start with the b to the power of 4 term. So these two times together give you b to the power of 4. So that will be 3b to the 4. Next, for the b cubed term, or terms, we can do b squared times this. So it'd be b squared times minus 20b, which would be minus 20b cubed. And then we can do 4b times 3b squared. Those are the two ways in which we can get b cubed. Onto the b squared terms. So we can do b squared times 20. We can do 4b times minus 20b. And 4 times 3b squared. Onto the b to the 1 terms. 4b times 20, 4 times minus 20b, and 4 times 20. Okay, simplify 3b to the 4. These two terms here combine together to make minus 8b cubed. These three combine to make minus 48b squared. These two cancel out. And then we're just left with plus 80 equals 0. So I'll call this equation 2. And just checking to see that those two things are the same. This should be the same as this, which it is. So we can then say that equation 1 is the same, maybe. Yeah, let's write it like that. Is the same as equation 2. So we have verified what we wanted to show. And finally, on to part C. The roots of the equation 3b squared minus 20b plus 20 equals 0 are 1.225 and 5.442 to 3dp. The value of b is therefore 1.225. And we want to explain with the aid of a diagram the significance of the root of 5.442. OK, so let's just go back a step, think about what b actually represents. So b is this x value here such that this area is equal to this area. This equation gives us the solutions to b. So if we look at what the question is asking us, it's talking about this part of the equation, the 3b squared minus 20b plus 20. Let's just first look at this here, the b plus 2 squared. When we set this equal to 0, you'd set b plus 2 squared equal to 0. That would give you one of the solutions. And you'd get b is equal to minus 2. b equals to minus 2, if we look at the diagram, well, that's over here. So when b is equal to minus 2, then the area between 0 and minus 2 would be equal to r1 because it's just the exact same thing as what we did in part 8. The second part of the equation, the 3b squared minus 20b plus 20, that gives us two solutions, 1.225, 5.442. And then we're told that b is the 1.225. 5.442 would be on the right side of 4. So I've drawn out here the same curve with those values of 1.225 and 5.442. The question is asking us to think about the significance of that 5.442. So I'm going to call this region 3, and I'm going to call this region 4. So first of all, we know that the integral from 0 to b, where b actually in this case is 5.442, 442, that was one of our solutions for b, of f of x, where f of x is this curve here, 
more specifically, it's the, the cubic that we had above. So what was that? That was x cubed minus 2x squared minus 8x. This integral here should also be equal to minus 20 over 3. If we go back to part b, this was the equation that we solved. The integral of f of x from 0 to b was minus 20 over 3. So if one of the solutions to b is 5.442, we should be able to put 5.442 into this, integrate this, and then get minus 20 over 3. So this should be true. Well, what does this represent? This represents the summation of these two areas. But we have to bear in mind that the integral from 0 to 4 of f of x, this is negative, as it's beneath the x-axis. And the integral from 4 to 5.442 of f of x is positive because it's above the x-axis. The integral from 0 to 5.442 of f of x, this is, the, this is the sum of the two areas. So we'd be doing area R4 minus area R3, because again, R3, that area would be negative, or rather the integral from 0 to 4 would give us that area, but as a negative value. So the integral from 0 to 5.442 would be the summation of these two things, but R3 is negative, hence we'd be effectively doing area R4 minus area R3. This must therefore be equal to minus 20 over 3, because, well, that is what the integral is equal to. And that means that area R3 is bigger than area R4 by 20 over 3. So we don't need to write out all of that to get those two marks. This diagram, plus this last line of working here, should be enough to get the two marks. I wrote it out in a bit more detail to hopefully explain why that is the case.